Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're gonna do something that's a little bit different and quite a bit of fun. I'm actually gonna take a really old video, one of my very first, and I'm gonna show you how I would change it and kind of rework it with the new things that I've learned over the past couple of years. Really what I'm hoping to do here is inspire you to grow in your art and really, really take your techniques to the next level. So let's get started. We'll start off today with our two inch brush and some white and blue. And of course I did a basic sketch on the canvas. And I'm gonna come up here to the top and drop in our little bit of a blue sky. Now I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. On screen here I'll have a, li a link to, to the video that I kind of got my inspiration from. <laughs> and don't laugh too much. It's one of my first. So if you wanna pause this video and go check it out, you're welcome to do that. But anyway, that's where I'm getting my inspiration. And we'll see how it goes. I'm not gonna stick to it perfectly because then it would just be the same old painting. In fact, I'm changing it a lot. This one that I'm kind of being inspired from didn't have mountains, it didn't even have a blue sky. But that didn't stop me from wanting to do one. There, I'm showing you how, how to use what you've learned to create a, a better composition. There. And then these mountains will get slightly darker as they come forward. Just like this. I love all these different colors in here. It makes it so detailed. Now with our filbert brush, I'm gonna just work in a few little background trees. There, now you can see really how that background turned out. Just a, a few minutes, really not long at all, very loose. A few minutes of scrubbing in some yellow, brown, little blue in there, and you have a very distant mountain that's covered in grass and trees, and it's just just a lot more colorful and a lot more vibrant than just having a background that goes totally blurry. So that's one way that we just enhance this work a little. And rather than, as you probably have already noticed if you've looked at the other video, there's two trees on the, on the right and to the left that go really high. Well, we're gonna do that, but we're gonna do it differently. So there will be trees here and maybe an extra special tree over here. Now let's go ahead and begin to fill up the rest of this painting, the rest of this area at least. I guess we're not filling up the rest of the painting with trees. <laughs> It'd be a little excessive, wouldn't it? Well, anyway, as you can see back here, I did a little more detail, not a whole lot, just, just enough to sort of, sort of concentrate some of your attention toward the center, and I went ahead and left the outside areas fuzzy. Thought that was kind of neat, just a, just a way to make the the center of the painting grab your attention is all. All right. Make sure you don't get these too big. You want these limbs to be quite small. And that's one way you'll make your paintings look more realistic and a little more advanced is to keep these limbs tight and small until you go for the ones that are almost right next to you. It'll be right here in the foreground. If you did one there, then you can do some large limbs, but for the background, keep them as tight as you can, really. You don't want a bunch of big old limbs that are super thick. <laughs> now we'll load a little bit of white really, really well into a filbert brush. And you see I've flattened that brush out, and that's pretty important. So right over here, <laughs> okay, right here. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna pull over. Now, this is, very important, this dark area in here, because without that dark, it's just gonna be kind of flat. And that dark stone or rock under there really helps to break it up so it's not the same all the way across. Now, of course, it's okay to have just some white water areas, but I don't wanna do that everywhere. All right, <laughs> especially at the top of the waterfalls, you always see those little little bits of rock. <laughs> I say always, but I'm sure it's not always. In a painting, they certainly work well. There. I just love painting these waterfalls. But you can't, you can't just do a, a brush over and leave it. You gotta actually work on them a little. 
in order to get this kind of effect. And it's very important where you put the brush strokes and how much paint you use. Don't use too much and make sure this background is, is very minimal. I wish I could spend forever showing you how to do these things, but it just takes so long to explain it. If you need help with water, I have a couple of good DVDs available. I'll put them up on the screen if you want to go take a look at them. I especially like the large rushing waterfall painting for teaching you how to do a, uh, an advanced style waterfall, something with a lot of detail, because that is one big waterfall. Love that painting. I just, I really hope I'm, I'm getting you guys excited about making your art come to the next level, bringing it up into a, a whole nother category. Before we go too far, I just want to slap in some dark color here. Brown and black is all it is, because these are just massive rocks here. All of this, and then this over here. So what's the point in spending all day on this? Now, obviously you don't want them to be flat, so take your Felbert brush when you're done here and add in some different brown textures, but still dark values. All right. We can do the exact same technique to the water as well, just to get it in quick. Now with our little detail brush, I'm gonna drop in just a few little branches and highlights here to the tree. I quickly blocked it in with a three quarter brush and now I've got a little bit more detail and control here with a smaller brush. And I'm gonna get these nice little, little pine needles that are being hit with the sunlight. The sun's coming across like this today as you can plainly see from the mountain. And so it's gonna mostly hit the right hand side here. And I don't want these trees to be too bright or take away too much from the overall kind of waterfall area, but I don't want them to go flat either. There, so we'll spend just a few minutes on this. There's a little guy kind of right behind him. That one needs some highlight too. Just this little bit of detail really brings out these trees on the right and kind of enhances the overall feel of the painting quite a bit. Now let's begin shaping some of these boulders here with a little more detail. Now rather than just doing cliffs that pull straight down all over the place, we're going to do a variety of different shaped rocks. And I think that'll really add some, some interest to the painting here, at least on this side, that we didn't have before. There, make sure you get plenty of contrast but at the same time. If you put all your contrast back here, then it's very difficult to make the foreground come close. So you gotta balance it out. You don't wanna go pure black back here. That would sort of mess around with the, with the contrast and the depth that we're trying to create. We don't want that. All right. And I've got a, a variety of colors happening. They're just kind of mixed around on my palette and I'm just dipping into some darker browns and lighter browns and, and that's how I get these variations in the rock. And also it's very important that this underpainting is very, very thin, <laughs> not thin like runny, but very little on there. Take a paper towel and wipe it off to make sure you have just the right amount on there. Too much of this black underneath, black and brown, and it will just be a big muddy mess. Now I'll drop in a huge tree up here. This tree has a lot of character and it's got some weird shape to it and, and that's good. Don't want a tree that has a normal shape. There, you see we kind of got a twist in the tree. It's got an old limb that's been broken off there and then it kind of quickly tapers in. All those things are nice. They help to add character so that the tree on this side isn't too similar to the trees on on this side, in fact, I think it's a completely different variety. This is not an evergreen tree and it's very close. So make sure you get the base of this tree way down here, almost growing into the water. <laughs> there we go. Just blocking in the dark area for now. Now I'm just going to block in a few little lines here and I put a little extra detail in the riverbed. In fact, <laughs> without these lines, if you were to cover up those lines, it kind of looks like a path. And that's basically the way you start out the rivers. And then you add these little lines over them and they become very shallow streams or rivers. <laughs> there we go. 
Now these darker rocks don't put anything over and they'll look like they're standing out of the water. And the ones with less contrast, go ahead and cover th up those with these little lines. And that creates the underwater area. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out my website, my DVDs, and also my brush line. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.